like I say, shout out to all the brothers and sisters out there in social media land. This is indeed a great day to be alive. This is a day that the Most High Heavenly Father have made. It's a day that we should rejoice and we should be glad in it. Nobody is promised to live another second. And so for those of us who are being graced to wake up and see another day, first thing we want to do is we want to give thanks for that. And then we also want to understand because we're not responsible for the day that we are living uh, and that we should be conscious of how we live in our lives as it relates to how we treat each other. So, like to say this, I'm going to use this old uh, intro that I used to use. Shouts out to all of my brothers and sisters, uh, to all of my Israelite family out there, to those that are near and those that are far off. When we start talking about those Israelite brothers that are near, we're not simply talking about those that have came to an understanding and declare that they are Israel. Because that word is going forth, there are many people that are starting to understand who they are from a, a national identification standpoint. However, that's not the end of it. You see, Israel, what made Israel far off is their inability to understand what their purpose was. And so you can understand and you can know that you are Israel. But if you don't understand what your purpose is, you being Israel in name and in word only, you still are far off. You got to understand that when Moses was dealing with these prophecies to the Israelites that was near and that was far off, hey, all of Israel, hey man, they was all in one place. They was all in one place at the same time before they ever was scattered or far off. But you can be Israel. And still be afar off because you don't understand what your purpose is. So we wanted to wipe that out. We wanted to wipe that out right quick. So, because uh, we got a lot of that now. Everybody want to be Israel. And it's going to be a fashionable thing in this time, in this hour, to be able to attach yourself to something. Everybody want to be Israel. But Israel is going to be known by what Israel do. You see, and so you being Israel by name and superficiality, by name, by clothes, by fringes, by all these external means, that don't make you Israel. I mean, you still Israel, but you Israel that's afar off in your understanding. So it was a twofold when we was dealing with far off. So I want to tell my Israelite brothers and sisters Hey, when you find out that you are Israel, that's only the beginning. Now you have to understand what the purpose of Israel was. This video ain't no specific. We don't have no specific place that we're going to go. But we do want to touch on some, uh, some PowerPoints that we are living in. And namely, we're going to start right here. We're going to start right here dealing with the pretext to the mark of the beast. The pretext that he shall cause all, both small, great, rich, poor, free, and bond to receive a mark. Otherwise, they won't be able to buy or sell because they won't be able to find employment. So we're going to deal with the pretext. We know that this uh, DVOC situation, this COVID-19 situation, we know that that's not the mark of the beast. But in order to find out uh, when any system is going to be effective, it first have to be tried. It have to be tested. And once it's tested, then you know which areas it need to be tweaked in. And this is what we're dealing with here. So this whole particular thing have all been about compliance. We can go back to 2019. Before it changed in the 2020, we can go back to 2019 when they first came up with the virus out in China. We can go back to those videos and where we said, okay, this is what they're going to do. They're going to bring 20 people here. Their excuse for bringing the people from China or wherever else they're at is going to be this. They're Americans. Bring the Americans home. That was going to be their excuse. 
It happened just like the Spirit showed it to us. They brought the 20. We said now outside of a week, they said the next week it was going to be 75 people got the virus. Two of them then died. A week after that, 150 got the virus. Five of them then died. A week after that, 300 of them got the virus. Ten people then died. I said, and so they're going to use their media propaganda machine to start funneling numbers as a means to radiate fear on people. And that's exactly what it did. When they start coming out with the, with the rushing for the vaccine, but I told my wife a long time ago, I told brothers a long time ago, long time ago when I was working at the school district, I had one of them brothers to call me. That been almost 10 years ago. He said, hey, Big Meats, you know, we used to be telling us about that revelation, talking about if we came to work today and they said, well, you know what? The company is implementing a new system, and so you must be found compliant to this system. Otherwise, you're going to lose your job. Hey, almost 10 years ago, and I get the phone call saying, Big Meats, this is exactly what you were saying. Yeah, it's staring you right in the face because prophecy can't be thwarted. It may take a while, but it's going to happen. It's going to happen. As, as we see in the book of Habakkuk, son of man, write down a vision that he that read it that may run with it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, though the vision may tarry, wait on it. For in the end, it shall speak and lie not. To everything that God has that been written by, by the visionaries, which were the prophets, though these things may tarry, though they may take a little while, we are to wait for them because they are surely going to materialize themselves. And they have materialized themselves even unto now. And we're just doing some brief caps over some of the videos that we have done over the years to bring people up to a certain place. And I told them, I said, listen, they're going to put mandatory vaccinations on everybody. You're going to go into work one day and you're going to find out that your job is telling you that you need to be compliant. Otherwise, you're going to lose your job. When my wife came home with that letter, she didn't have to be excited. There were many other people that didn't have to be excited. Now, I just got off the phone with a brother, uh, and uh, I talked to a brother and sister, and I know he don't mind me mentioning his name. His name is Jim Rod. He's been one of my young kings I met when we was on a mission down in, in Florida, down in Jacksonville, and I met him down there, and, uh, and I had a phone call with him uh, on the other day. He and his wife called me and, and was telling me that his wife, had received notice of mandatory vaccination. Otherwise, her job was going to be threatened. And so I told them both, uh, you know, that, that they could do what they're going to do. And even before you fought for a religious exemption, prepare yourself to lose a job. Understand that this earth, the world, the earth, the, the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof. The whole world and everything that is in it belongs to the Most High. And God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. All the silver and gold is his. Everything in this world belongs to him. How be it that somebody might be shaken and gripped with fear because they may lose their job. I said, so the first thing that you have to come to grips with is to understand is that ain't no job in control of your destiny. And many people, they can hear the videos, but then they don't hear. You know what I'm saying? So that was the first uh, line of instruction is to put people's focus in the right place. You put your focus on, on God, not on man, on what men going to do. And then the second thing we did is we showed her what she was going to say with her religious exemption. And this applies to anybody. You want to file for a religious exemption? It don't take all that extra stuff. You don't have to know no Bible. You don't have to have no pastor speaking. You, you don't have to have none of that. Only thing you need to know is that this earth belongs to God and God created men and he created them with a free will and a right to make a choice. And anything that comes against that is against my religious belief. I believe that God give every man that have breath in his body a right to a choice, a right to be able to make a choice. And no man, no government, no body of men has the authority to take a man's right away that God gives him. So if you are in this situation, there's your religious exemption right there. 
Now, we showed the young king and his wife how people are being controlled by fear to make decisions. And what it really comes down to is it comes down to the same thing that Satan offered the Messiah. Satan offered the Messiah something. And he's offering the same thing to people. I don't know if I got that book over there. Let me see if I got it over there. I got that book over here. Now, the thing that Satan offered, that he's still offering right now, is it says that when the Messiah went up into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan, the final thing that Satan offered him was the kavod or the riches of this world. It said he felt like the Messiah was supposed to worship him even though he knew that the Messiah was coming to destroy him. He said that he offered him the kavod of this world because when he had offered it to other men, they gladly received it. So he offered him all the kingdoms of this world. In other words, what he was saying, I give you all the money that you want if you'll bow down and worship me. You see, ain't no new tricks, ain't no new schemes, brothers and sisters. You better hear and you better pay attention. Ain't no new schemes, ain't no new tricks. You're still being offered the same thing. Right now, people are falling victim to worshiping the false idol god of money over God. Because when they say, hey, you either do this or you ain't got no job. Oh, what am I going to do? How am I going to take care of my, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? You see, you put your trust in a false God. You easily forget about the fact that God, the one that gave you your breath. And why you worried about your money? What if you choose the money and then God take your breath away? Where is that going to leave you at? There are many brothers and sisters that have already fallen as victims to these things. When you hear these videos and you know that it's dealing with the word pertaining to the word and you feel the spirit of conviction, it don't mean that your faith is sealed. It means that God's grace and mercy and his love and compassion for his people is giving you another opportunity to repent and be able to acknowledge the fact I chose God. I chose money over you. See, people don't really want to look at it like that. They don't want to look at it like they choosing money over God. You see? But if God don't give you breath, you wouldn't have no money. So why would your decision making be based on money who men control in this world? The monetary system in this world was created as a means to bring people to a false worship of a false God. So, so in my instruction to uh, the young king and his wife is that she would just stand her ground. I said, because there's a lot that can happen in 30 days. I said, and so you'll notice that they'll keep pushing back the deadline because they know that they can't do that even according to their own laws. It is illegal for the government. The government cannot deal with these things like that. And they know this. I said, so they'll keep pushing the date back and their media machine will keep promoting the same propaganda and the same fear causing people to comply to these different things. But at the end of the day, they know it's going to end up in failure. So why not just sit back and wait? Just sit back and wait. And don't comply. It's not going to last. You see? I said, and should it happen to where you do lose your job, you already readjusted your mindset that the Most High going to take care of you. He might not have wanted you on that job. 
So he caused this thing to blow in so that you can lose it. So that he can show you that he can take care of you. You see? Now, here's the other thing. I told my wife, I said, you know what? There's no way. I said, lawsuits going to start rolling in out of so many different places. My wife sit right next to me. And she'll tell anybody, hey, I'm not elder. I don't know what he know. Hey, I don't know the Bible like he know. I don't know. But the things that she see, they are confirmed by the things that she hear. And that's the same thing. If you hear something first and then you see it later, what do you put your trust in? Do you put your trust in what you saw that came after what you heard? Or do you put your... Put your stock now in the things that you done heard. Hey, sweetie. Oh, yeah, I was going to send you that thing because I just got off the phone. And um, I just explained to the brothers and sisters how step by step we done dealt with this mandatory thing. And I told you I talked to Jim Rod and his wife the other day about that, the religious exemption stuff. Well, and I tell them the same thing. I tell you, just hold on because a lot can happen in 30 days. And they, you know what I mean? Yeah, and they keep pushing it back, right? Yeah, they push it All right, down. now let me show you what happened. <laughs> Jim Rod just sent me a thing now dealing with OSHA. OSHA have now recanted, and they're refusing to push those mandates with 100 employees. I told you that's who pushed it back at the Internal Revenue yeah, was OSHA. Yeah, see, no, see, my only thing is, is what I'm saying is that you heard it before you seen it, right? Yeah. You see? You see, the God's spirit go before us, and he make us see things that haven't happened yet. And then when they <laughs> happen, they become a confirmation of our faith. That the spirit done these things. That's right. So to the brothers and sisters, all these people that been afraid, my wife been got work. She worked for the federal government. You see, if anybody was gonna be afraid, she could have been afraid. But how's she gonna be afraid that she lived with me? I've been telling her this whole stuff since the whole thing rolled out. You know what I mean? And every step of the way, and when she come back telling me what she heard, it I mean what she seen. It, the, it is not greater than what she heard because what she seen is what she heard already. Dang, babe, you said it was going to happen like this. Dang, babe, I tell you every time, boy, you got me not even wanting to watch TV no more because now I'm seeing all this crazy stuff that you be seeing. That's just how it go. So we want brothers and sisters to understand, hey, listen, in this hour, wheat is being separated from the chair. This is the time that the angel uh, have thrown in his sickle to reap the harvest. And if brothers and sisters can't stand firm with these little small, mediocre, minute tests, then they're going to fall as victims for the ultimate failure, which is to come in the future. So, so we wanted to talk about that. And anybody that have fallen victim to these things, and they still pushing boosters and mandatory this and mandatory, they have already locked Australia down. They have put a lockdown on all of the people that have not complied. Yeah. They can't go out the house unless they go into the store or unless they go into school or unless they go into work. And we know that they can't go to work if they ain't complied. So they can't even go in a restaurant, they can't go in a bar, they can't go in a movie theater. They are literally to be confined in their own homes. And what's happening is us in Australia will surely be coming to the United States because everything that has happened has happened in different other parts of the world before it got here. But it's all going to end in failure. And so the only thing that they're going to do is all of the people that's tapped into their media propaganda machines, MSNBC, ABC News, CNN, you can't even really include Fox News in there unless you want to see uh, the opposition. Anytime you want to see both sides of a particular thing, then you watch Fox News when Fox you know, when when the Democrats is leading, and then you watch CNN when when the Republicans is leading, because both of them gonna talk about what they doing, the other one gonna talk about what they not doing. But my thing, my advice to any of you is that you can't watch none of this stuff. 
You ought to have a Bible in one hand and a newspaper with the current events that's happening in the other hand so you can be able to see prophecy. Now, yep, Elder Monio said he's been quarantined for two years because over there in Israel, it's 10 times more aggression that's being used. So, so we're letting you know what your religious exemption is. You, whether you know the Bible, whether you a function, whether you're in church, whether you're part of any organization, here is your religious exemption for any job. And it's not going to work no way. Your religious exemption is this, is that God gives every man and woman a right to free will. And that free will cannot be taken away by no man, no governmental authority, or no body of men. And that's the only thing you need. Anytime somebody come to take away my choice, that's against my religious belief. That's against my spiritual belief. Point blank and period. So, brothers and sisters that have fallen to those categories of compliance, whether you have been made to comply out of fear, because you're afraid, because they threatened and said people that have existing health conditions, you know what I'm saying, or at a greater risk. You know what? You know what the greatest risk to people is? Who they listening to. Listening to what your enemies say can destroy you and even kill you. So if you have fallen victim to that, and then the whole time you saying you trust in God and you in church and you believe in this and you believe in that, then guess what? You can't have it both ways. You can't serve God and man at the same time. You can't be controlled by man and then say that you serve in God. And as quiet as it's kept, this is some of the craziest stuff that's going on when people start talking about. Now, you got some Christians out here that'll haul off and ask you like one of my aunties asked me. Have you had your vaccination shots yet? Hey, that's like asking me if I had an AIDS test yet. You don't ask me about my medical history or anything else. That's my personal business. What you do with yours is your business. But don't put that on me. Now, these are people that say that they trust God that they serve in God, that Jesus is the great physician. You say that with your mouth. And there's a scripture for that. Let's go read a scripture, a couple of scripture with that. Because this is what my brothers and sisters that have jumped out in that water, have been led out in that water and didn't understand that you wasn't doing what God told you to do. But that is no, this is not nothing that's condemnatory. It's something that requires a level of repentance when you understand that it was my lack of faith that caused me to start putting my trust in what men had to say. Go ahead, sweetie. So let's go look at what the Messiah had to say to people uh, in that condition. And I sat there and talked with some of my uh, Christian brothers and sisters, and they say, well, you know what? Well, God don't want you to be no fool. He don't, well, of course not. He don't want you to be a fool. What he do want you to do, he do want you to understand what his word is saying so that you can be able to see these things when they happen so that you don't do things and then contribute them to his account. Let's go Matthew 15 chapter. 15 chapter. This is where we at. Let's look at this with the mandates in mind. Because this is what some of our brothers and sisters are saying. We don't take the Bible and, and, and put it in layman's terms to where it can be made applicable for our living today. Then they came to the Messiah. Who? The Pharisees and the scribes, the religious leaders, they came to the Messiah and they said, why do your disciples not obey or govern themselves by the traditions of the elders or the things that men put in place? Why do they not want to obey the things that men are putting in place? Why they don't want to obey what the government said? Why they don't want to obey what Fauci and them said? Why they don't want to obey what the scientists are saying? For they wash not their hands when they eat. It was a mediocre thing. Why they don't want to obey? The science that's telling you to go and do it. Hear what the Messiah said. Why do you also not obey God's commandment? 
because of your tradition. How easily is it that you can forget that God is the controller of everything and the author and the finisher of life itself? How is it that you can neglect the things that God requires of us because of what man have said to you? I tell you how. Here's what the Messiah said. You are a bunch of hypocrites. Looking at unvaccinated people or people that won't comply as though it's something wrong with them when really you the problem. It's something wrong with you. Because if you in a place to where you decide that you're going to take a man's word and then you're going to blame somebody that's choosing to be obedient to God's word because God gives us a right to free will and declares that we have a right to choose. If we got a right to choose to serve God or serve ourselves and you don't take that away from us, how much more is a, I have a right to make a choice when it comes to something that some man want me to do? This ain't no new thing. There was people in the book that felt the same way. Why these people that follow God don't want to do what we telling them to do? Okay, well, it's the flip side. Why is it that you that's following men don't want to do what God said do? That's the question. That's the $6 million question. He said, you're a bunch of hypocrites. You expect people to follow men when you won't follow God. And you think that there's something wrong with them. Because they choosing to follow what I say. When it's really something wrong with you. Because you refusing to follow the thing that's best. He said, you hypocrites. This people. He said, well did Esaias prophesy of you. Saying, this people draw near me with their mouth. But their heart. It's far from me. You see, it's going to take more than lip service. Faith untested is not faith at all. And when God allows circumstances to come into your life, it gives you an opportunity to have your faith enhanced by standing and trusting him. When this COVID-19 stuff blew in, it was a major test for all of God's people on the earth to see whether they would choose what man was radiating, which was fear, or whether they would choose faith and trust in God, even if it meant that they lost their job. I can't think of a better position to be in than to be standing by faith, standing for God, and then lose my job. It's the greatest opportunity that any man or woman can have to see God riding in out of nowhere and still assume the care for you, still pay your bills, still make sure you got food, still take care of your children, all because you took a stand. But many people were unable to take a stand, and they fell as victims to following men and then they come back and make it as though those that standing for God and those that standing on their faith is something wrong with them. Even the very place that calls itself God's house, even the very pastors and the very preachers and all the different people that's dealing with the word that say that they represent God are the first ones that close what you call God's house down. And if it ever was a time that people need to have faith built, it was during this time. And how could you not go into the place to where they said this is the place where faith is born from the word of God. And you got padlocks on the doors and all kind of signs put up. You know why? This people draw near me with their mouth, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me. Because they are teaching for commandments, which really are not commandments, but they are doctrines of men. You got brothers and sisters out here running around here because they didn't being hit to hit to had a shot. You run around here and, and, and teach that like it's a commandment of God. Like it's something that God requires. Oh, God don't want us to be no fools. God don't. Hey, it ain't nothing that God required, baby. You following men. 
He said, but in vain, you worshiping me. Because you can't even, ain't even yet learned how to trust me and stand. You don't know what's in nothing. Well, you know, you don't know what's in the food. You don't know what's in this. You don't know what's in that. Yeah, I don't know what's in it. But ain't nobody forcing me to eat it. If somebody start force feeding me something, baby, you best believe I'm prepared to starve to death. So all those wicked examples of extremism that they try to use, that stuff don't. Well, you don't know what's in the food. You don't know what's in the water. Hey, you don't know what's in the medicine. You don't know what's in the toothpaste. You don't know what's in the. Nah, I don't know what's in it, baby. But I guarantee you one thing. Ain't nobody force feeding it to me. Ain't nobody making me take it neither. Ain't nobody telling me what. I better do with what God gave me. So you can miss me with that mess. And I'm telling you the honest to God truth. Out of love, I tell my brothers and sisters that, but they know not to deal with me on it. My job is to make you see the error so that you can understand God's compassion, his love, and his kindness toward us work who believe that we might be able to come face to face with the reasons why we make decisions, because the choice is ours. It belongs to us. And repent. And repent. Shoot, sweetie pie came on to turn the heat on, so I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to disrobe from some of this stuff. I'm gonna have to disrobe, baby. That's what I'm gonna have to do. Oh, y'all wasn't meant to see that, but since y'all did see it, just know that I'm a soldier in God's army. He ain't got no cowards. I'm going to put my feet on the neck of anything wicked coming against me. I don't care where they come from. So, be as it may. Now, we dealt with that. So, any brothers and sisters that fall into that category, just go and just humbly say, Father, you know, I know that the earth is yours. I know the world is yours. I know all of these things. I know you give men the ability to learn and seek out new things. I know all of that. But I made a choice. And it didn't have anything to do with you. I made a choice out of fear of losing my job. I didn't know what I was going to do. I made a choice because... Uh, I've had some health issues, and I've done these things. And if by chance I've done them for the wrong reason, I ask that you'll forgive me and that you'll increase my faith and that you'll help me to stand. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. So, now the next thing that we're going to deal with, we're going to be moving into something that's different because you will understand, like we start off dealing with Israel, we understand what Jacob's trouble is, what the end time going to be, and all these things that's being produced is coming by way of prophecy. So what we're going to do now, there are many people that still yet without this particular understanding, they're not fully aware of the different things that's transpiring in this world. So we're going to deal and give you this word, write it down so you don't forget it. If you have not been exposed to it, write it down, don't forget it, then you go when when you get some time and then you find out everything that you can find out about this particular thing. It is one of the things that's causing uh, anybody in the political arena. It's one of the things that's causing. You notice that the Democrats been losing their places when they go out to vote. They voting and they putting Republicans in them places. These same people that voted Democrat and put Joe Biden now they shifting. And you know what's the reason why they're doing it? It's all about the future. Can't no man thwart the future. You see, God controls the future. He's omniscient. He possesses all information, past, present, and future. So write this word down. Go find out what it means. Critical race theory. And critical race theory, what critical race theory is, is critical race theory is going above and beyond. Teaching. 1619 Jamestown, Virginia. It's going above and beyond teaching. The first black slave this, the first black slave that, the first black slave this. It's going be uh, above and beyond that to bring truth to the next generations of children that's coming up in the public, or ed public education system. What critical race theory is, is critical race theory is now dealing with the teaching of students, not only the things that the European brothers, our white brothers and sisters have done 
to the 100 million Indians that they infected with smallpox and wiped them out and stole all of their land is dealing with the truth of how many treaties that they made with the Native American Indians and how many treaties that they have broken with them to take and occupy their land. Even until this day, they are still doing the same thing to the Native American. It is also dealing with the people that were stole from their land, a.k.a. Negroes, that came into Jamestown, Virginia in 1619, and it is dealing with how these particular people had been enslaved and oppressed throughout their whole life, and even upon being released from slavery, their critical race theory is showing you how the racism was knitted and woven into the fabric of the society and into the fabric of the laws that have been established, whereby the Negroes, a.k.a. slave, a.k.a. Israelite on the run, will never have any type of justice or free rights in this particular, that's what critical race theory is. Critical race theory is dealing with the teaching of the truth and the history of the Americas in its totality and in its fullness. And so our European brothers are in an uproar. And they're crying. We don't want no racism taught in our school. We don't want this. We don't, we don't want our kids to be feeling bad. And we don't want our, our kids to be going through. Well, baby, your kids are going through it if don't nobody teach it. They're going through it regardless. And critical race theory is about to be dealing with the fulfillment of prophecy. Because when we start teaching the history of the Americas, from a whole, not only do you teach the wicked acts and the heinous acts and the crimes that was committed against the peoples that resided in America and the people that were brought into America, not only are you dealing with that, but when you start teaching it in its totality, now you also have to start dealing with the people that it was done to. Who were the people? Who were they? Where did they come from? Where did the ship get them from? What banks did they land on? And if they landed on these banks and we got them from here, then they could couldn't have been the same people. And if they weren't the same people, where was they running from? Where was they fleeing from? When you start dealing with the totality of truth, now you start to come to a place to where you start learning things that you didn't know. Like the people that we did these things to, we didn't know that they was God's jewels. We didn't know that they were the rings on God's finger. We didn't know that they were the necklaces and the gold and diamonds and the precious rubies. We didn't know that these people represented all of the ornaments that the Most High would drape on himself. We didn't understand that these people that you call nigger, we didn't understand that when God got dressed, he would drape himself with these particular people. They would become his jewels. We didn't understand that. And they don't want their children to understand it. But ain't nothing that they can do about it. They can't stop it from happening. It's going to happen one way or the other. The only thing that needs to take place is that the brother, God's people, need to be able to move move fully in place. And I'm not talking about gloating about being no Israel. I'm talking about understanding your rightful responsibility as the priest to all the nations in this world, teaching and exemplifying God's righteousness and then making way for repentance to all that will come. Whosoever will, let them come. When a man can come face to face with his shame and the things that he have done that was against God, God gives him the opportunity to make it right through repentance. But you got to come face to face first. You see? And when we start talking about Gentiles and things like that, brothers and sisters get happy. But let me tell you something. It's a warning in there. Leviticus 19 chapter. He said, do be mindful. Don't you do anything. In these lands that I'm sending you to, don't you do anything that you saw the people that once occupied the lands doing. He said, because what they were doing is what caused me to spew them out the land. And I will spew you out too if you do anything that they did. And what? They hated a people without a cause. And you're going to tell me because of what you've been through, you're ready to do the same thing to them that they did. And God will spit you out the land too. 
That's one of the parts where brothers cross off at. You see? So, let's go and show you why. See, ain't nobody ever going to call me a racist because a black man can't be a racist. You see? Only way you can be a racist is when you hate somebody without a cause. They ain't done nothing to you. You see? But if I dislike you because of the things that you've done, that don't mean that I hate you. That don't mean that I hate you. And, and people of God can't be uh, have hate running through their bones. Because that's not a requirement of the Most High for us to hate people. But a requirement of the Most High of uh, us is to give way for repentance. When man comes to a place to where he understands the crime that he committed was not against the people, but were against God. And this brings me to the fulfillment of prophecy, because unless we understand these things clearly, we won't be ready to rule anything. Everything will get put in its proper place. So let's go. Jeremiah chapter 16, verse 19. O oh Lord, my strength, my fortress, and my refuge in the day of affliction. This day of affliction is twofold. See, God has been our strength, our fortress, and our refuge in our time of affliction. We will is what the world would know as the most resilient people on the planet. Because of the affliction that we have been through. Yet through all of our affliction, we continue to rise. This is what people are afraid of. You see, you got to be able to check it because somebody during their affliction is going to come to this place. So how is it that these people can be the went through everything that they done went through? And here, I've lost my job. I've lost my money. And I'm ready to commit suicide. What is it that separates me from them? What is it that they have that I don't have? See, these are the things that are going to be learned. The Most High have been our fortress and our strength and our refuge during the time that we were afflicted. But the affliction is twofold. Because also, during the time of the affliction, the Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth and shall say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies and vanity and things wherein there is no profits. Shall a man make gods unto himself and they are no gods? Therefore, behold, I will this once cause them to know. I will cause them to know my hand and my might. And they shall know that my name is the Lord. How is he going to cause our white brothers to know his name ain't Jesus? How is he going to cause our white brothers to know that the Christian church was falsehood and idolatry? How is he going to cause our white brothers to know that the riches of this world did not give them no type of supremacy? How is he going to cause our white brothers to know that just because you got pale skin didn't make you better than nobody? I tell you, he said, when it's time for their affliction, they will suddenly begin to think, we're not like them people. We can't handle no affliction. We can't handle the affliction. We can't handle being on the bottom. 
We can't survive with no job. We can't survive with no money. We can't survive if we lose our car, if we lose our house. We can't survive if we lose everything. We, there is no way possible for us to climb back up and get to where we're. How is it that these people came with nothing, was beat with nothing, hung on, uh, in trees, set on for oppressed, depressed, impoverished, kids taken away? How could they go through those things and still end up with houses, still end up with cars, still ended up with land? and still have their faith intact to believe what they believe. How is it that it could be such a great difference? You see, the only way our white brothers will ever come to see these things is that they have to be afflicted because all of these things have been blinders to them. And God said, I will cause them to know. He said, they're going to come from the ends of the earth and they're going to confess before God's jewels. We inherited lies from our fathers and things that were vanity, meaning meaningless, and things where there was no profit because of where they find themselves. They understand that all the things that their parents did while they was on a campaign committing crimes against all of the people in this country or in these lands, it didn't end up in no profit. But the people that you've done it to will now become the righteous rulers in this world. Let me read it again. O Lord, my strength and my fortress, my refuge in the day of affliction. The Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth and shall say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies and vanity and things where there is no profit. Now, when you start dealing with lies, you are dealing with the educational departments of this world. When you start dealing with the educational departments of this world and dealing with the lies between two people, one people God is talking about who are his jewels, the other people God is talking about who he's going to afflict for what they've done to his jewels. And his jewels uh, and the people that done it did not understand that they were his jewels because of the lies that their fathers told. And right now, critical race theory is turning this whole country upside down. Because they don't want to come face to face with the fact that their forefathers told them lies. That black people were the seed of Ham. And that they were cursed to be slaves. They don't want these things taught. That the Negro was originally the kingdom of priests. They don't want these things taught. That through every religious construct that's in this world would come at the hands of the Israelites and be made into an act of rebellion to produce a false religion that would absorb people into. They don't want to identify with the fact that God told Moses, Moses, go down there and speak to the children of Israel and tell them if they will hearken unto my voice and obey, obey, obey my voice indeed, then they shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a peculiar treasure for all the earth is mine. You say you believe in all the prophets, brother, my Islamic brothers? You say you believe in all the prophets from Abraham, from Adam, all the way down, and you see Moses, God talking to Moses about who would be the rightful instructor. You can go and look in your book of Sarah, second Sarah, even in the Holy Quran, to tell you of all the people on the earth, we sought out that the children of Israel would be our instructors. During the time of the Gentiles' affliction, they shall come and declare. Who are they going to declare to? You think they're going to go and declare to their parents? Oh, you telling me a lie. No, they're going to declare that to the people that the lie was on. Surely, we have inherited lies. Things wherein there's no profit and vanity. You start dealing with critical race theory, you're dealing with the teaching of history from a total, a, a total standpoint. 
not just a bit and sprinkle. Keep teaching the kids about World War II. Where some murders campaign, World War I murders campaign, Vietnam War murderous campaign, oh, Iraq murderous campaign, Syria murderous campaign. Slavery, murders, see all these things that they teach them is, is one that, that causes them to have this great feeling of pride about being white. But God said when I start afflicting them, they're going to start having second thoughts because they're going to wish that they were brown. I, I know that sounds difficult. And this ain't no message because as we said before, we don't deal with racism. We deal with hardcore truth. And this is the hardcore truth that the European brothers and sisters are raising up against all over the country. They don't want to face it. They can't say that it's a lie because they know all these things happen and all these things are fact. But you don't want them taught to your next generation of children. You'd rather keep putting lies on top of lies on top of lies. But God said, I'm going to stop the lies. I'm going to put affliction in the place of the lies. And when I put that affliction on you, the truth going to come rushing in like a flood. And they're going to fall down before the feet of God's jewels and declare, surely we have inherited lies from our forefathers and vanity and things where there's no profit. Surely we didn't know that you was God's jewels. Surely we didn't know that you was the, the one that was supposed to teach us. Surely we didn't know. We never seen righteousness because you never been in place. But we didn't know that. Had we known it, we might have did something different. But surely we have had inherited lies. We inherited the lies that we was better than you. We inherited the lies. We inherited the lies. And God said it's coming down. And this scripture right here is making itself manifest right now before the world that we are living in. Critical race theory. You go find out and go see what it is. It's your educational departments of the world that are responsible for the lies that have been funneled in. They're also responsible for the destruction that is coming into the world. Let's go read another one. Show you this. And you brothers and sisters are always talking that stuff. Well, my kids ain't going to be able to go. Well, if you don't understand that the public educational system is a weapon that has always been used against our people, and it will always be used against our people if God didn't do something about it. And so God is choosing to send affliction into the world just so that his truth and his people can get in the right place that they're supposed to be in. And you got to come out of all that falsehood. I don't care how much you go to church. You can be in there Sunday morning for Sunday school. You can go to morning service. You can go to Wednesday night Bible class. You can go to the evening service, the afternoon service. That don't give you no favor with God. Only thing that give you favor with God is knowing the truth, who you are, what your responsibility is. Keep not thy silence, O God. Hold not thy peace. Be not still. Psalms 83rd chapter. For lo, thy enemies make a torment. For lo, thy enemies make a For lo, thy enemies make an agreement. They that hate thee have lifted up their head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy hidden ones and, and have consulted. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and have consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation. Let us cut them off from being a nation. How are they going to do it? That the name of Israel may be no more in their remembrance. How is anybody going to get cut off from being a nation and to the point that where they don't remember their own name unless they establish educational departments in this world that are able to do that? That the Negro, the Negro, his life began in 1619 in Jamestown, Virginia. And poofed on the scene as a slave getting off a boat. Hit every educational department in this in this system. From grade school to middle school to high school to college. On down. Everything that's in these educational books. Your history begins at Jamestown, Virginia in 1619. He said, let us cut them off from being a nation. 
that they don't even remember that their name is Israel anymore. You know what they're saying? We got to build educational departments and we got to put lies on top of lies on top of lies to not only where they don't remember their name, but we got to make sure that none of our children ever know that their name is Israel anyway. If our children ever find out that their name is Israel, then they're going to understand that we lied to them. Oh, ain't that what the scripture said? They shall declare it. Ain't nothing that can be done about it. It's God's will materializing right before our very eyes. You see? And you're sending your kids off to school. And you think they're going to get a good education? You're a fool. You're a fool. The only education your kids going to get is going to come from you. And you need to be the first one teaching your kids critical race theory. Not so that they can be feeling bad when somebody call them a nigger. Not so they can be feeling bad when they see a picture of a noose or somebody making fun. Not so they can feel bad, but so they can understand why it's done. And then they can understand what's going to be the repercussion for these things that the children are doing. They, they can be able to understand that the only reason why the children do it is because of the lies that they're learning in their house. We ought to teach our kids the right thing. We ought to teach our kids the right thing. How they come home wounded because somebody called them out their name. No, they need to understand why they called you out of your name. Why they called you out of your name. Who you are. They don't know no better. You need to understand, baby, they called you out of your name because their parents are at home teaching them lies. You see, their parents know who we are, but their parents are in rebellion against bringing themselves up under the rightful rulership of this world. And we have never known the rightful people that we are because that is our responsibility to teach to each other. He said they're doing it for that. Don't hold it against them. One day soon, they're going to come back and they're going to confess at your feet that their parents lied to them and that's why they treated you like that. And when they come back with that confession, you got to have a heart enough that ain't harboring no anger, no bitterness, no, no, none of that. And be able to say, I know that you, I know that you didn't know. I know that your parents taught you lies. Now that you know, you repent. So, so it's what it is. It's what it is. Critical race theory is a bad thing. But I ain't just dealing with the white people. Dealing with the black people too. You see? Because everybody got to see they self for who they really are. And everybody got to see they self for the responsibility. Our father, we went into captivity and slavery and suffered all these things because of what our forefathers did. Our forefathers went into rebellion against the Most High God. And that's how we got into this foolishness. But see, their affliction is going to come by way of the same foolishness that was committed by their forefathers. It's going to be a shift. It's going to be a shift. The only problem is, is that where your mind going to be when the shift take place? Because when all their companies are destroyed, who are you going to work for? How important is their job going to be when the job don't no longer exist? Huh? Where are you going to be? When the educational system fall and crumble, how you going to learn then? When you to put all your stuff and all your learning into the hands of somebody that ain't never taught you right. How you going to learn then? You see the mindset that got to change? God's righteousness have to become the educational departments of this world. We the ones that was doing Isaiah chapter 9 and 6. Unto us a son is born, unto us a child is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. You're talking about righteous rulership. You ain't talking about no righteous rulership like our brothers be talking about. Holding on to some Torah who's completely wiped out that never did nothing righteous for nobody. They ain't talking about that. It ain't talking about that. Because the laws in Torah are pretty common sense that your forefathers never lived up to anyway. It said the government would be on his shoulders. Talking about spiritual righteousness. The righteousness that's born in the heart of a man to where he just knows what's good and what ain't because he had the spirit guiding him. Not no words. Where you gonna be at? Where your mindset gonna be at? When you're still begging for crumbs, where you gonna be at? 
when the governmental systems crumble and you ain't getting no food stamps no more. You ain't getting no welfare check no more. Where you gonna be as sister when the governmental institutions crumble and you find out there ain't no child support a payment coming because ain't nobody got no job to take nothing from. Where you gonna be? Where your mindset gonna be at? Negro queen black woman? Negro male? Where your mindset gonna be at? You prepared to govern and rule starting with your own house? How you gonna tell me that you can be a governor of society? You ain't even learn how to govern yourself as it relate to each other. Where you gonna be at? When all these things, all these illusions that pit us against each other are suddenly destroyed, where are you going to be at in your mind? i tell you where you're going to be at. Either you're going to be in alliance yourself up with the mighty man of valor that declared he was on the Lord's side, or you're going to perish with the enemies that you put so much dependency on. Shoot. See, it's so much. But God doing what he said he was going to do. What we going to be at? What we going to be at, brother, sister? Laying at the gate of the temple called Beautiful. Shaking a rusty, raggedy cup. Looking for a handout. A bag of bond in the kingdom. Where you going to be at? In your mindset. Where you going to be at in your thinking? When your children ain't got no school to go to, what can you teach them about who they are, their regality, their royalty, what people they are, what their background is, what their culture is? Why is it that the whole world follows their dancing ability, their gifted ability? Why is it that can't no company survive without them? Why is it that these people that were classified as nothing or worthless, why is it that the whole world is depending upon them? What you going to teach them? When your enemies ain't no longer teaching. They can't stop critical race theory. Because critical race theory is dealing with the truth about the races. Not racist. About the races, plural. Just like the Bible. It's critical race theory. This is the generation of the sons of Adam. This is the generation of the sons of Noah. This is the generation of Yeshua Hamashiach who told the disciples, now go into all the world and make disciples out of all men, teaching them to observe whatever things I have taught you. This is critical race theory in your Bible, dealing with the Amalekites, the Hamites, the Hittites, the Hivites, dealing with the sons of Edom, Dealing with the Ashkenazi, the sons of Gomer, the sons of Japheth. This is critical race theory that uses the Bible as a means to bring truth to its totality. That's what they don't want. Nobody wants to hear the truth in its totality. Our Christian brothers don't want to hear the truth in its totality. That there will never be a Christian. If it wasn't for the Israelite, nobody wants to hear the truth in its totality. That Ishmael and Isaac was brothers, but God chose Isaac to funnel his righteousness into the earth and then break everybody else subjected to his children. Nobody wants to deal with the totality of truth. Just a bit and a piece over here, critical race theory, it's dealing with races, dealing with the nations, that's what it is, and one day, our people, our brothers, our white brothers, who we were instructed to teach God's righteousness to they shall one day come and declare the reason that they never learned God's righteousness is because somebody painted them a false description of who God's people was. Let me say that again. The reason why we never learned God's righteousness is because somebody painted a false picture 
of who God's people were. 1 Maccabees 3rd chapter verse 48. And they laid open the books of the law wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their image. He said, and we grew up thinking that God's people were people over there that looked like us. They lied to us about who God's people really were. You see, you ain't the only one that was lied to. The educational departments of this world had to bring about the fulfillment of the prophecies of Psalms. Let us cut them off from being a nation. And any time you cut off from being a nation, they break your nation up and they send you all into other nations. And then they make it where you don't remember your name no more. First thing that happened when I asked people these simplistic things, I said, what's the first thing that happened when they, when they bought the slaves into the Americas? What's the first thing that they did to them? They changed their name. They changed their names. They beat their names out of them. And then they separated the old from the young, that the old could not teach the young. Their enemies would become the next generation's teachers. And they would teach them in ways to where they would have no idea that the Negro name ain't Negro. That his name ain't black. His name ain't African American. His name is Israel. You see? <laughs> so... Did I have anything else that I wanted to cover? So that's an assignment for all the brothers and sisters. And then I want brothers and sisters, as we started off with the COVID vaccine thing, to take courage that also has recanted. They are not going to. They ain't had no choice but to recant. Because, see, if the, if the government and the courts block it, then guess what? OSHA can't go no farther because they got to go by whatever the courts say. But OSHA have declared for jobs that have over 100 employees that they can no longer mandate vaccine, vaccines on their people. But guess what? You're dealing with some wicked people. Just because they know that that's the truth, that don't mean that their media machine is going to stop it. Their media machine going to continue to push it out there, continue to do it. As long as our people don't comply. So... Peace and blessings be upon all of you. Uh, I just want to say this is indeed a great day to be alive. We don't get no guarantee on tomorrow. I put that post on there yesterday. This is indeed. And then I said, you finish the rest. I wasn't mad about nothing that I heard. And so this is indeed. This is the day that the Most High have made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Most people got the latter part. But nobody got to be alive. Because if you're not alive, then you can't rejoice. And if, it's, if you're alive, then you can rejoice. And if you're alive and you can rejoice, this is indeed a great day to be alive. Now... I had one answer to that. Oh, man, I was in stitches. My stomach hurt it. As I go back and read, this is indeed <laughs> one of the brothers that put the end. <laughs> this is indeed the end. Oh, man, that tickled me to death. I had the biggest laugh, boy. I wasn't expecting that one. But he sure put it in there. So... It's going to start with each one of us understanding what God required for us, starting right here at home. When my kids leave my house, even though I don't have little children no more, when my kids will leave the house, mm -mm -mm, I didn't have to worry about them because they prepared. I taught my little girls about lesbianism when they was six and seven years old. 
I never allowed them to go and spend the night at other people's houses and things like that. I taught them. I taught my sons, my son about lust and, and all that cable TV and all of these things. His mom, I, I did all of that. That's my responsibility. My responsibility. Let me tell you the truth. When these teachers who have been given the responsibility to lie to your children, when they see the understanding and the uh, the level of understanding that your child has because they are learning truth, they know not to even deal with them children because they know what's coming out of the parent. They know not to deal with them, period. That's our responsibility. We must teach our children what they call critical race theory. But critical race theory has nothing to do with racism. It has everything to do with the truth. And if me telling the truth offends you, or you feel like that's a bad thing that's happening to your children because they learning, I know how it is. Don't no kid want to be taught or learn that his parent was a murderer. That his parent hate people without a cause. That his parent was a thief. No kid wants to learn that. No kid. No parent wants to teach it to their kid. Well, if I can teach it to mine, you can teach it to yours. If I can teach it to my kids how you can lose a marriage through being a cheater, if I can teach it to my kid how you can lose your house and your car by being a drug addict, if I can teach it to my kid about how you can hurt and bring yourself to destruction by being drunk and out of your mind and acting belligerent, if I can teach it to my kid how I done gotten positions to where I literally shot somebody before. If I can teach it to my kid about the things that I have done that are against God, that were not right. If I can teach it to my kid, I'm teaching it to my kid so that they can have a greater comprehension and a greater level of understanding when it comes to the life that they live in and the choices that they make it. And if I can teach it to my kid, you damn well better be able to teach it to yours. And if you can't teach it to yours, my Gentile brother and sister, then God got some affliction waiting on you. And when that affliction roll out, your children going to want to know, why am I being afflicted like this when we're supposed to be serving Jesus? Why am I being afflicted like this when they're telling me God is good? Why am I being afflicted like this when I've been a part of the church when it ain't nothing but me and our people? Why am I being afflicted the way I'm being afflicted? Something is wrong. You can't teach it to your children. Here's why we being afflicted. We did this, baby. Granddaddy and them did this. Great, great granddaddy and them did this. And they did wickedly against God. And as a result, God putting us in this position because of what we have done to these people here. That's all critical race theory is. So, but we got to be the first ones to get on top of these things. Talking about you don't want critical race theory taught in your schools. You don't tell me that. I always wonder. I done been quite a few places. I done been all over the world. Now, people really want to find you with a movie camera. They'll find you. If the local news really want to find you and have something else, they'll really find you. You let me get caught up in some crap like pedophilia and watch how fast it be a news reporter at my door. Or talking about, oh, he's an elder. He's representing the Hebrew Israelite community. Oh, he's been in a church. Oh, he's an ordained licensed minister with the state of Missouri. You let me get wrapped up in some foolishness like that and watch how fast a, a, a reporter's camera find me. I wonder why a reporter's camera can't find me now. Why the camera can't find me now? Because you know what I asked them? I say, you mean to tell me you have a problem with teaching the totality of the truth of nations it, that have come into this country and our history? Oh, 
You got a problem. You classify me as a hate speech for calling a gay man a faggot. Well, why have not you stricken down every Hollywood movie that have ever used the terminology nigger in it? Why haven't you stricken down every book that ever used the word nigger in it? Why haven't you stricken down or put up under the jail every European person, every pale-faced person that ever allowed the word nigger to come out of their mind? Why ain't they in jail? Why ain't they under the jail? Why ain't the movies off TV? Why are the slave movies still been, why the movies still been made where they can interject it and somebody can say, like in the hateful eight, hate, well, they don't like to be called niggers anymore. Why ain't the movies off? Why ain't they took these movies off? When you get down the words, baby, you get down the words. This is the truth. I'd like to see. I dare one of these. I dare. I dare one of them. I wish a camera would come my way. Because I'm going to ask the question that we can't seem to get none of our people on TV with enough sense. And they do that strategically. We got a lot of our own figurehead people out there talking about critical race theory is racism. Critical race theory is racism. Critical race theory is the truth that's dealing with the things that white people have done in this country, all the way from the fact of their inability to survive without the Native Americans, all the way down to their inability to be a great nation without the cotton fields and our people in there picking the cotton, all the way down to their factories, all the way down to everything, everything that they have ever experienced that was good have always came at the hands of the one that they gave no respect to. That's the truth. That ain't no racism. But if somebody decided to call me a racism, baby, you can come on and call me that. But it's what it is. I mean, in the video right there, but all of you got an assignment. Because he who don't assume the responsibility and care for his own house, you worse than an unbeliever. You need to throw your Bible out the window. Quit going to church. Go Burn all of your suits up and all that stuff that make you seemingly look righteous. If you ain't got the time and the energy to invest in your own house, teaching your own children, you might as well go find the nearest club, fall off of it, and die. Fall off of it and die. Peace and blessings.